Most of the time, we, software engineers, are using AI to write code or to get commands we might need to perform some operations. Today, I want to do something different. I want to use AI to create user interface for an internal developer platform. And I want that user interface to be fully, fully dynamic. Instead of telling users which button to click or which YAML to write or which command to execute, I want them to interact with the platform through AI. Now, to be clear, I don't want them to ask common questions like how to create an application in Kubernetes or what the status of something is or how to delete some resources. I want them to interact with the platform I built. I want AI to help them while being limited to the capabilities of that platform. I want AI to be very specific while still being very easy for anyone to use it. In other words, I want to enable developers to create, observe and delete instances of services available in the platform and I want to do that with AI. Moreover, I don't want them to write large prompts. I want to make it easy. It should be a no-brainer, wizard-like experience. To get there, I created APIs AI can interact with and I did that with Crossplane. But you should be able to accomplish a similar result using other tools, whatever you want. It does not matter how you built the platform. What matters is that it is accessible through APIs. That part is important since, as you will see soon, that will enable the API to interact with the platform. We'll take a quick break for me to introduce you to Test Sprite, the sponsor of this video. Test Sprite is an AI agent designed to make software testing fully autonomous and fast and accessible to everyone. And that's awesome since I'm sure that many of us understand the importance of testing. You probably want to focus on your code or operations or whatever you're doing, but you also want your work to be fully tested. TestSprite can complete an entire testing cycle. It can identify bugs, it can validate the changes, and it can ship with confidence. It helps you avoid getting distracted with repetitive QI tasks. TestSprite AI agent is like a virtual teammate taking care of planning, execution, and analysis. It allows you to focus on building features, not fixing broken releases. Big thanks to TestSprite for sponsoring this video. And now let's go back to the main subject. All in all, I already have an internal developer platform accessible through different API endpoints, and I want AI to be the interface developers use to interact with it. We'll see how we can use it to create services, to observe the status and gather information about services running inside the platform, how to fix issues, and finally, how to delete them. We'll do all that from the perspective of a person that does not know anything about those services. From developer's perspective, all the details of the platform are irrelevant. They can, but they do not need to know what's below the hood. All they have to know is that AI will do everything for them. How does that sound? I will use Cloud Code today and I will not go into details how it works for two reasons. First, I already explored it in that video over there somewhere and I don't want to repeat myself. Second, everything I'll show can be done with almost any AI agent. The results will differ and the process implementing what I did might vary. Still, the logic is not specific to Cloud Code and should be applicable to any agent. With that note out of the way, let's fire up Cloud Code. Now, let's say that I'm a developer who would like to create an instance of a service available in the platform. One nice thing we can do in Cloud Code are custom commands accessible through slash project. The moment we type slash project, we can see all the available custom commands. Given that the current task is to create a service, we'll select just that. Now the AI gets to work and while it's doing whatever it's doing, let me say that I did not tell it which services are available in the platform, how they work, what their schema is, nor any other information specific to any of those services. I wanted it to work for any service available in the platform and I did not want to spend time giving it detailed information or instructions. I want AI to discover what can be done and that's what it's doing right now. After a while, AI discovered that in this specific platform, users can create an application, a database and a GitHub repo and present the user with numbered options through which they can select to create any of those. Now, let's say that we would like to create a database. So all we have to do is type number two, at least in my case. As a result, AI gets to work to discover 
all the questions we might need to answer to get a database. It figured out that the database can be created in AWS, Azure, Google, and AppCloud, or inside the local Kubernetes cluster. If, for example, we would like to run it in AWS, all we have to do is type one, and AI will try to figure out the next question. Next, we are asked to pick the namespace where resources of the service will be created, and the name we would like to give it to the database, to the DB. Since we chose to use AWS, it retrieved the available regions from AWS itself, or from the documentation, or from somewhere else, I don't know. It does not matter where it got the info it needs. What matters is that we are presented with a list of regions where the database server could run, and that list is specific to the choice we made earlier. We can choose, for example, to run it in North Virginia by typing the option one. The rest of the questions follow the same pattern. We are asked to specify the databases we would like to create inside that PostgreSQL server. That is followed with a question whether we would like to apply a database schema, and if we say yes to that, which database should the schema be applied to, and the SQL schema itself. Finally, there is a question whether we want to set up secrets management, to which we should answer with no, since I was too lazy to configure secrets manager in AWS today. And that's it. That's it when data gathering is concerned. AI now has all the information it needs to generate the manifest. We are asked for where would we like to save the manifest file. The example path, mydb.yaml, sounds correct. So we can, I can type just that. And we can see the manifest it generated. AI figured out which services are available in the cluster. In this case, those services were created as crossplane compositions. After that, it provided all the necessary information. We might need to answer its questions, gathered all the necessary info, constructed the manifest, asked us how we want to name the file, and now it is asking us to confirm that we want to create it. Of course we do. And here comes the interesting part. It figured out that we might need a password for that database server. So it asks us what password we would like to set and for the permission to create the file. And that's it. Right? It contains two files, one that contains the SQL claim for your AWS PostgreSQL database and the other with the secret with the database password. But there is more though. There is one more step left. We can choose to apply the manifest directly to the cluster or to create a pull request with those manifests or to just keep the files without doing anything else. Not doing anything would be silly. Creating a PR would be the best option since that will allow Argo CD or Flux to synchronize it into the platform, but I was lazy with that one as well and did not set it up. So the only sensible option is to choose to apply the manifest directly. And here comes the question. Wasn't that amazing? I mean, I at least think it was, but that's not all. We're just starting. Creating services is not enough. There are many other types of operations we might want to perform. We might, for example, want to see the status of one of the services or that specific service. And we can do that with yet another custom command. After a bit of work, AI discovered that there is only one instance of our services running. That was to be expected since we created only one so far. So the choice is easy. After a bit more work, AI came up with high level information about the service. We can see that provisioning of the database server is in progress. We can see some basic information and which infrastructure is being provisioned. Further on, we can see that there are a few issues it detected, but we are assured that it is a typical provisioning state for a new AWS RDS instance. It takes time until everything is up and running. There is no reason to panic, at least not yet. We are even asked whether we would like to see more detailed information about any specific aspect of that service. So we got both high level information that is user friendly and should not be confusing to developers, but also the ability to go deeper into one of the aspects of the service. It is awesome. It's awesome. I love it. Now let's create an application while waiting for the database server to finish cooking. We are again presented with the choice which service instance we want to create. This time it will be up claim. Now, I will not go into details of the process since it follows the same pattern, but with different outcome. It asks us to select a namespace, 
type the name and the ID, set container image, define the port, enable auto scaling, set the minimum and the maximum number of replicas, type the name of the database to connect to, specify the host address and whatever we want uh, to do with Git or to be more precise whether we want to enable a Git repository. At the end, just as we saw with the database, we get to choose where it will save the manifest file. We are shown the final manifest and we can choose to apply it directly to the cluster or create a pull request so that Argo City or Flux can sync it into the cluster. By now, the database might be running. Let's check whether that is indeed the case. Just as we did before, we will select one to observe the status and gather information about the database we created earlier. Over here we can see that this time it discovered a real issue. It cannot find the secret with the database password. We can see what the possible solutions are and we can get the more detailed information about the error details, required fixes, AWS RDS requirements and the application impact. That's awesome! Right? We, we have all the debugging choices in front of us and we can choose one of those options or we can just tell it to, hey, fix the database issue. Now, I will not bore you by forcing you to watch me fixing the issue. I'm sure you get the point. We observe the status of a service that composed quite a few resources. We detected that there is an issue and we instructed AI to fix it. All that is left from the demo perspective is to remove the services we created. We can do that with yet another custom command. We can select which custom resources we want to delete. That can be the database or the application or both. So let's remove them all by typing 1, 2. Next, we are asked whether we want to see all the resources that will be removed when those custom resources are deleted. Well, why not? At the very end, just as with creation of the resources, we can choose to delete the manifest and create a pull request or delete directly using cube control. Let's go with the latter option I haven't set. Uh, GitHub, Sargo CD, Norflux. And that's about it. Everything we did so far is gone. And since we are done for now, we can stop Cloud and, among other things, see how much it cost us so far. We spent less than 30 cents. And I can safely say that's a small price for what we accomplished. Moreover, today we are using Cloud, which is arguably the most expensive AI available right now. If that's too high of a price, we can switch to a more budget-friendly option like one of those that come with monthly subscription. And now comes the moment of truth. We'll take a quick look at how I did all that. Making all that work is easier than it seems. The first iteration, the one we saw today, took around one hour in total. All I had to do is create a few custom commands, which in case of Cloud are essentially prompts, and to store them in .cloud slash commands directory. Whatever is there is automatically accessible through slash project followed with the name of the file. Here's one of those. It might look complicated or overwhelming, but only until we try to calculate how much code it would be required to create something like that. It is actually straightforward. There are general guidelines like always present multiple choices as numbered lists that apply to any of the steps. And then there are the steps themselves. It should discover all the custom resources a user can create. It should limit those to CRDs in the, the API devostoolkit.live. It should output numbered list of composite resources and so on and so forth. What makes it special is that it is fully dynamic. It would work with anything we put into that platform, as long as that something is discoverable through Cube API. And we have a similar custom command to observe services and another one to delete them. Now, and this is important and I have to be clear, those commands are far, far from being final. Those are only the first iteration that I did. This video is the first time I run any of them. Just as with code, we need to iterate our custom commands or prompts to perfect them over time. Nevertheless, even after one hour of work and without proper testing, the results are amazing. Or at least I think they are. Still, nothing is perfect and we might want to spend a bit of time going through pros and cons. The biggest potential problem with using AI in general, and especially for user interfaces, is the non-deterministic nature. 
there is no guarantee that the same input will produce the same results. AI is not like automation, which we expect to behave always in the same way. If you try to reproduce what I did, you will likely not be able to follow along by repeating my instructions. Your outcome will be different. On the other hand, if you use the script, there would be no flexibility. We could not say in the middle of the process to stop execution or modify something, deviate from the plan, continue execution, telling, tell it to correct some outcome or many other things we can do with AI. AI does not guarantee reproducible results, but it does provide a lot of flexibility. Which one of those is better will depend on your preferences. If you do choose AI, the next question we should ask ourselves is whether the results will be satisfactory. Is what I did perfect? It certainly isn't. It will never be perfect. Nothing is. However, with a few more iterations, I'm confident that it could be great. What I did can easily be classified as not even good enough, but I'm confident that it can reach the level of being great. Not perfect, just great. There is room for improvement though. Maybe all that should be wrapped into a CLI, maybe. Maybe it should be available through a web UI. Maybe it should be a backstage plugin. Maybe Scott will take it over and create one. Who knows? And there's more. For example, I feel that there should be an option to hide the output generated by the AI executing the commands while trying to figure out what to do. I think that I should use MCP memory server so that it remembers what it did in the past so that it can avoid discovering what's in the platform every single time. That alone should make it significantly faster. There are many other things missing for something like this to be great. For now, all I can say is that using AI to create interfaces user can use to interact with an internal developer platform has a lot of potential, especially since we can choose when to follow the plan and when to deviate from it. And right now, I need to get back and work on it. So thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Cheers.